Hey everybody, I'm Gregory Brown, and uh, a few days ago I mentioned on Twitter that I was thinking about making some uh, short videos about how to work with uh, binary file formats, and uh, the response to that was pretty positive, so I figured I'd start uh, right away. So uh, this first video is about decoding binary file formats. It's a very basic video, um, but I think it should be uh, interesting to anyone who hasn't worked with binary file formats in Ruby before. So here we go. First I want to say that I'm not an expert in this stuff. Um, I've never actually studied it formally, um, but that I do have a little bit of experience because I've written uh, some code that really depended on me uh, processing binary file formats, uh, in particular Prawn, the PDF generation library uh, that I started and now is uh, being run by a, a awesome core team. Um, it made it so that I had to work on PDF, uh, the, also the true type font format, uh, and then for image support we needed to deal with PNG and JPEG and probably some other things that I'm not remembering right now. Now, uh, on our team, um, James Healy uh, did a lot of our image support, uh, but I still needed to understand it enough to maintain it. And um, also, while I started the work on our true type font processing, um, Jameis Buck did a lot of the uh, later work on that. But in any case, I've been familiar with these formats, and um, that's helped me get enough experience to, to learn something about binary file formats, which is that they're not really that complicated. Now, today, what I wanted to look at is PNG. Uh, the thing I like about PNG is that it has a very nice, uh, if a bit lengthy, spec. Um, but Everything that I'm going to talk about here, uh, sort of informally, if you're actually interested in how PNG works internally, um, you can certainly read the specification. There's also a Wikipedia page that's pretty good. Um, so it's, it's a good format to uh, work with for learning purposes because it's particularly well documented. So uh, what I'm going to show you right now, uh, what you see on the screen, is that it's possible to get the dimensions of a PNG image with just a one-liner in Ruby. Um, and you can see uh, the image that I'm working with is just a sample image that's uh, 300 by 300. Um, and if we read the file in as a binary file and then we use uh, a special string method called unpack, uh, we're able to get those dimensions pretty easily. Um, now, the thing that might be uh, a little bit confusing if you haven't worked with pack and unpack before in Ruby uh, is the pattern matching syntax. Um, sometimes people see things like that x16nn and uh, they start to think about regular expressions and pretty much any terse language makes people think that something's crazy hard. But uh, it's actually not as hard as you might think. Um, you just have to understand what these symbols mean. Uh, so. In English, what X16 capital N capital N means is skip 16 bytes and then read two big endian 32-bit integers. Okay, so the important thing here is that when you're working with binary files of any type, uh, that you are working with very low-level data and you actually have to care about the types of objects that you're working with. But in addition to caring about the types, you also have to care about the way that those types are represented in the binary file. Um, so for those of you who have either never taken a computer science course or never studied uh, this sort of stuff, uh, don't worry, that's pretty much um, where I've been even though I just for in my case, forgot my computer science. But big endian and little endian are not the heart of concepts, and the example that you see here that you've probably already read while I'm talking pretty much explains uh, how things work. Uh, so let's take a decimal number like 1337 and convert it to uh, binary. You can see that uh, in the first uh, paragraph of code uh, on this slide, um, and you can see that it becomes 1010011001, one, zero, one, right? Um, so if we take that number uh, and then pad it with enough zeros to bring it up to 32 bits and then break it up by the octets, if we pack it, now before we looked at 
unpacked, but pack is just the same operation in reverse. If we take that number, stick it in an array, and then pack it, uh, and then take a look at the bytes, um, if we're working with the big endian um, format, then it pretty much comes out exactly the same as the ordinary binary number, um, except with just some padded zeros. And we can see that here, that basically what we see is that um, you just see a bunch of zeros and then the same binary number that we saw uh, in the first paragraph of code. On the other hand, if we wanted to do this in little endian order, uh, what it does is it basically, the bits uh, within a byte stay in the same order, but the bytes are flipped. So basically on a byte level it's reversed so that the uh, bytes that represent the smallest part of the number uh, come first. Um, and you can see that in purple down on the bottom here. Um, and you can basically see, like this is like a just a simple proof that um, the binary representation of 1337 in big endian and little endian order represent two completely different formats. Uh, so if you interpret one instead of the other the wrong way, uh, you end up with the wrong number. Um, so this is something that's normally covered in the documentation of any file format. Just make sure that you pick the right thing. Uh, now, big endian tends to be the more natural way to think uh, about things. Um, at least in terms of just looking at the numbers, and it tends to be what is most commonly used, but you need to be aware of this fact. Um, so in this case, now we can completely understand that this is skipping the first 16 bits and then pulling two 32-bit uh, integers out in big in the end format. Um, so I said we skipped the first 16 bytes of the file. Uh, but what was in them, you might be wondering, or why did we skip them? Uh, the reason why I skipped it was just to make the uh, first example a little bit more sexy. Uh, realistically, uh, you would actually have to look at those first 16 bytes to reasonably validate or process the file. Um, so if we look at this breakdown, we see that Basically, there's uh, the first eight bytes are a magic number. Um, now, this is a signature uh, that represents uh, something that should uniquely identify a PNG file. Um, now, there's nothing that would stop something else from using this uh, signature, but the assumption is that if the signature does not exist, then it is not a valid PNG file, so it can be used for detecting uh, when the file format is not PNG. Uh, this, um, this magic number is composed in such a way to uh, test certain capabilities uh, and also express um, the... Uh, validity of the file. It doesn't really matter though. I mean, the reason why these are often referred to as magic numbers and many formats have them is because they're primarily just used to uniquely identify a format so that you know that you can process it. Now, in many uh, different binary file formats, uh, the rest of, after that signature, the rest of the data is basically uh, a series of tables uh, separated into chunks, right? So, in uh, a PNG file, the thing that comes right after the signature is uh, a four byte number um, that tells you the length of the chunk that is to follow. Uh, and the spec requires that the first thing is the IHDR, which is the header uh, chunk, um, and that's what the next four bytes are. It's just a four byte ASCII indicator of what that table is. And, all that tells us is what part of the spec we should use to uh, determine uh, how we should interpret the data that follows. So that's basically how that works. Uh, you can see that I'm using a different unpack statement here um, where I'm using A8 N A4. So the A8 is just pulling out the PNG signature as ASCII. Uh, now the N is pulling out a four byte uh, integer, and the A4 is pulling out the chunk type as ASCII. So that's what's going on there. That's what the first uh, 16 bytes of this file look like. So uh, the 
the header chunk that we looked at before and sort of glossed over, the first eight bytes of it are the width and height, and that's what we pulled out. But there's an additional five bytes, which is why the length of it is uh, 13. Uh, and each of these uh, are short integers, uh, taking up a single byte, that are basically flags that tell the uh, PNG viewer um, or processor uh, certain things about that PNG. Um, so you can see them marked out here. They're not terribly important, uh, but that's what those extra five bytes are. So if we wanted to uh, get to the point where we're processing uh, the header, skipping over it, and then looking at the full I IDA, uh, IHDR um, header, then the line of code down at the bottom of this slide does the trick. Uh, you can see that we're getting 300, 300 for the width and height. Um, and then for the color depth, we are getting eight. And if you look at the screenshot, you can see that that matches the info there. Um, and then for the, the color mode, we're getting two, uh, which actually they just use a lookup table, but that is what the color model RGB maps to. Uh, for the less, the, the remaining three, these are often zero. Uh, the, the, the first two zeros are going to always be that case because those are the only standard uh, types. The last one uh, has to do with interlacing. Uh, most commonly, there isn't any. Uh, but this is processing basically an entire table of binary data, the header for the file. Um, now, I've sort of breezed through this, and I've been showing you one-liners. Um, but I think that I've given you enough information where if you go ahead and go over to GitHub uh, and look at uh, the repository there, you can take a look at a uh, more reasonably structured um, PNG processor that I wrote for the purposes of this uh, little talk. Um, and if you study that, you can see that it's basically just a fancy, uh, more structured version of um, what I talked about here. Um, and it uses a lot of the same concepts. Um, so with this, you actually know enough uh, so that you can get started playing around with uh, other formats. And what I would recommend is just to look a little bit deeper into how pack and unpack work and what their syntax is like, um, and then to sit down with the specification for a file format that you might be interested in, and then you can try these ideas out. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, I'll probably do several more of these videos, so if you have questions, um, you can leave them on the YouTube video, or you can send them to me over Twitter um, if they're short. And uh, this uh, video is sort of the second in a series of various screencasts uh, that I wanted to do um, because these days I work for the Ruby community full time um, and I'm hoping that as I make more of these videos that people would be willing to support me uh, financially um, because right now I'm not really doing consulting work uh, except for the bare minimum and that sort of thing. Um, I will not uh, push this every single time I make a video, but if you like what I did here and you want to support me, there's a URL there that you can go to uh, where you can send me some small uh, monthly payments that would help me keep doing this stuff and also work on open source and my free online school, Ruby Mendicant University. So uh, if you like this and you want to see more of it, uh, definitely let me know. And if you really like it, uh, think about sending me a few bucks so I can keep doing this stuff. Thanks for watching.